Okay, I swear to god I didn't pick this game just for the nostalgia hit. Yes, my advanced age inclines me towards fond memories of childhood isolation whenever I hear chiptune music, but I get releases with that option every month. Bat Boy was chosen because I like deflecting projectiles and this game lets you do that a bunch. I've heard Shovel Knight referred to as a well-done modern take on Mega Man, the kind of thing Mighty No. 9 tried and failed to do. It's kind of not, though. I had an NES and beat two Mega Man games in my youth, including the damn Yellow Devil who's become so popular in the new games. I was a fan for a while, and while Shovel Knight has the look down, it's missing a key aspect, boss weapons. Mega Man stole weapons from the bosses he fought, challenging the player to figure out who they were best against. Shovel Knight doesn't do that. It would violate chivalry, I guess. Bat Boy takes a step closer, but we'll get to that in a minute. First. Yes, I agree, Bat Boy looks like it wants to be the next Shovel Knight, borrowing elements like the map, fog of war, the village, tavern, and themed levels. Is it as good as Shovel Knight? No. But come on, Yacht Club's opus is a high bar to clear even ten years after release. A game does not have to be better to still be good. Bat Boy is good. Just not as consistently good. So what's the story here? Welcome to, I think, present-day Japan? Our pro tag Kun Ryusuke is a baseball player at his high school and one of seven sports-loving friends. Each has dedicated themselves to mastering their chosen game. Swimming, gymnastics, football, basketball, track, football, and tennis. How do they go about mastering their field? Why, by dressing up in Super Sentai outfits and using their sports skills to fight evil and give me flashbacks to my childhood. Though our only time seeing them in action doesn't elicit much praise, since they all get possessed by a sorcerer and dragged off to another dimension for the trials of darkness. All but Ryusuke, whose baseball talent lets him whack the ball of energy into a crow instead. That's why baseball beats tennis, Saki. Ryusuke's gonna hold that one over your head forever. Now it's Batboy's job to find and rescue his teammates by whacking them upside the head with a bat until they're better. Alternative medicine for the win. What follows is a very sports-themed quest through a weirdly sports-obsessed land of pigs. Each dungeon is guarded by a boss. Most of these bosses are your friends and the dungeon enemies will reflect their sport. Shinai Gai's mountaintop retreat is staffed by shinobi and samurai. Pigs with batons and ribbons gallivant through Scarlet Twirl's jungle. Racket Girl's Super Mario Bros. 3 tribute is crewed by racketeers and spearmen. Guess there's only so much you can do with tennis. That boy interacts with the world using his trusty baseball bat, no surprise there. Would have been false advertising otherwise. If Bat Boy's on the ground, he swings forward. If he's in the air, he swings in a circle. On the ground, he can reflect shots back at enemies or even direct them into switches. In air, he gets a bouncing attack he can use for extra height or as a panic button when the screen gets cluttered. And that's the basics. Enemies in Bat Boy have a tendency to fire off projectiles, most of which become ammo once deflected. Actually, enemies themselves become ammo, as struck enemies will roll across the terrain, taking out other enemies until stopped. You can rack up some nice combos, and even get rewarded with extra gems for doing so, but where things get fun is when enemies start adapting. Like when you bat an unfortunate piggy towards a soccer player, who stops his teammate and kicks him back. Or fellow batters who send your projectiles back at double speed and can only be finished up close. My favorite level is the Haunted Mansion. I won't spoil the whole thing, but know everything is a trick. Finding the hidden goodies demands unlearning basic gaming habits and doing things that seem nonsensical until you realize there was never a reason not to do them except that you never do. What I will spoil is this chest here, because giving it a good whack will trigger some laughter and a suddenly mobile mimic. Instead of being a one-off, a whole section of the mansion is dedicated to solving mimic-related puzzles. I was absolutely delighted up until the room where it was raining mimics. They even used previous successes to lure me in for a bite, and I had no one to blame but myself for not being more suspicious. Batboy's basic mobility is pretty good. After the first level, he gains the ability to spin his bat in the air, using it as a double jumper to turn gears. Later he gets wall jumps. He's actually got several others, one for every defeated enemy. This is where he gets more Mega Man cred, but not in the way I was expecting. Unlike the Blue Bomber, Batboy, oh hey, I wonder if that was intentional, doesn't get to keep the weapons of the bosses. Instead, they thank him for their concussions by teaching him a technique from their sport. These range from a ground pound to a grapple hook to a bubble shield. Thing is, they all require stamina. 
You start with three and can increase it with potions, but it's still a finite resource, meaning you have to strategize how to use them. I get why they limited these moves. Endless dashes and grapples would keep Batboy in the air constantly and negate the need for the bat. But since the developer can't know whether the player will have enough stamina to use them, levels can't be designed around them, meaning they're kind of mini-cheats for when things are a bit too hard or act as keys for hard-to-reach areas. You know, or a speedrunner bait. And I know what you're thinking, these are just Shovel Knight's relics. Yes, but also no. Shovel Knight's relics serve a variety of functions and cost different amounts of mana. Since he starts with 30 and can regain with magic jars that drop from enemies, Shovel Knight has more freedom in how he uses them. Ryosuke's skills all use one stamina, I beat the game with six, and that can only be replenished at checkpoints or a rare wall bun. So instead of learning how to use my new abilities, I would hold them in reserve, just in case I needed them before the next checkpoint. It's a design choice that encouraged me to not engage with it, and that's usually a bad idea. The abilities are also where some of the inconsistencies show up. Nothing here was enough to break or ruin the game, but it did make me call foul a couple of times. Moonstar here has an attack where he sucks everything in towards him and then blows it all up. To survive, you have to get out of range before he goes nuclear. Both of my dash abilities kept failing me, and it took a while to figure out why. See, both abilities start by moving you backwards. Only like 5 pixels, but enough that when forward momentum starts, Ryusuke immediately collides with Moonstar, ruining the escape attempt. The other was in the challenge zone Perfectionist. Aquarius Bubble Shield refills your air. Oh, you want that, Sonic? Gotta speak up, can't hear you. It also briefly shields you from damage, including spikes. It makes some out-of-range enemies a little easier to handle. So yeah, protection from spikes. Protection from... spikes. I really don't know what I'm missing here. Clearly the bubble works, but not against these spikes. Why not? It's not even proper damage, the game acts like I fell into a pit. What is this? Am I missing something obvious? Also, the game is a little easy. I might just be like THE god gamer, but I hit credits in about 5 hours. Most bosses I took down in under 4 tries, two of them I took down first try. It's not that it wasn't fun, it was absolutely fun. It just wasn't that challenging in the end. Complaining that a game is easy is kind of gatekeepy, since everyone has different levels of skill and it's nice to play a lower stress action platformer, you know? And they're all nitpicks in the end. Gameplay in Batboy might not be the most original thing ever, but it's solid and it brings enough new ideas to the table to hold my interest. Oddly, more than Shovel Knight did. I know, heresy. The art style is your standard We Loved Our NES package, sprites with limited pixels but used effectively enough. I wasn't wowed by any of Batboy's scenery, but none of it was visually offensive either. Music was all serviceable, with the Ice Palace being a standout. The biggest draw for me was the characters. This feels so much like a Saturday morning cartoon I would have watched, and if Sonzai Games ever turns it into an anime, I'm there for it. Basketeer dribbles, Blazing Star sprints, Aquarius swims, and summons dolphins. Hey, what exactly do they do in Japanese high schools? Oh, do not answer that. Their attacks are all appropriately sports-themed, and I'm disappointed we don't get to play as them. Maybe next game? Ryosuke's friends all chat before and after being beaten, then hang out at the local bar where they can be interacted with at any time. It's cool to see them chilling in costume but with helmets off. Strong character design there. We don't get much from them, but what we get made me want to know more. I tried googling Batboy fan art and was... disappointed. The bar is also where you can buy power-ups, play music from the levels, and talk to the optional bosses you beat. There's even a ninja pig who's lost his puppies and kittens and needs you to find them. I, I don't have an explanation. I might actually still finish that one. The memory of Nuclear Blaze is strong in me. Leave no fuzz butt behind. The standout character, though, is Garo, aka Peachy! Garo has the honor of being the first being Batboy has conked out of possession. Miraculously, instead of his tiny bird body being crushed, he snaps out of it, gains a slew of local knowledge, the ability to speak, and decides he's tagging along. Batboy's busy. He can't speak except in cutscenes, but Garu, that means wolf, doesn't it? is ready to comment anytime things get weird, scary, or just plain stupid. He's pretty much your dog. Except that he's a bird. Not everyone in the game is clear on that. And I really enjoy the humor he brings to it. Levels are your standard 8-bit arrangement, but having Garou give his thoughts adds a dash of funny. Like asking how you're able to wrap around the screen when he can't, or how neither he nor the local merchant can figure out what the factory level is making. Or when he forgets a lethal fall for you is not a lethal fall for him. 
a little comic relief can help freshen up old ideas. It's possible that I'm coming to Batboy with fresher eyes than the average indie gamer. Shovel Knight is a classic now, but it's not a classic that ever particularly grabbed me. I, I didn't like the movement, the story was okay but not compelling enough to keep at it. I kind of rage quit at Plague Knight without interacting with too many of the game's systems. So it's possible that someone more intimately familiar with the classic formula would find Batboy more derivative than I do. That said, Shovel Knight is almost a decade old. I know, it's hard to believe since Yacht Club keeps releasing DLC, new games, and special appearances. So it's not that surprising to see someone try their own hand at the formula, and it's nice to see it done well. And that's Batboy, my shiny new game. Thanks for playing, everyone.